Hello, I'm Justin Porter. Welcome to another video. Uh, tonight I want to talk about um, why I don't believe in the Bible. Well, the first thing, basically, uh, I want to give you an illustration. Wherever you live in the world, walk down 20 houses and grab the mail out of somebody's letterbox and read it. Now, is the mail addressed to you? No, it's not. It's addressed to the person who lives 20 houses down. You pick their mail. It's a bit like the Bible. When you read the Bible, the Bible says, I, Jehovah, picked you. But the um, Bible's not talking to you. It's talking to the nation of Israel and um yeah in the time period the bible is addressed to the israelites i'm of uh, viking ancestry my ancestors came from um europe scandinavia somewhere around there and we were all vikings and we worship thor the god of thunder now the bible is like when you read the bible it's like you're reading someone else's mail. It's not addressed to you. So whenever you read the Bible, find out who wrote the passage of Scripture and who is it addressed to. And if you're not a Jewish um, person, Hebrew, I think the Jews are beautiful. They gave us Bob Dylan. Um, what's his name? Albert Einstein, Jewish. Beautiful people, Jew Jews. So... Um, I'm not Jewish, um, but the Bible is addressed to the nation of Israel. It's not addressed to Europeans or Africans or Asians. It's addressed to the nation of Israel. And so these are the reasons why I don't believe in the Bible. Why does the New Testament speak about a hell, hellfire, Luke chapter 16, yeah, and the Old Testament doesn't speak about hellfire. Now, the rich man Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, the Old Testament doesn't say anything about hellfire. Uh, why is baptism mentioned in the New Testament? There's nothing about baptism in the Old Testament. And the way I look at it, <coughs> Mark was the first gospel that was written, and then came Matthew and Luke, so they copied of each other. Let's make it a bit better. And then John was the fourth one. John was on, on another planet when he wrote that, or Magic Mushrooms or something. Now, Saul, who wrote the book of Acts and a lot of the other parts of the Bible, Saul or Paul, the Apostle Paul, he'd never even met Jesus. So a lot of this is a bit books of the Paul wrote were written in the 50s about 20 years after or 20 30 years after Jesus died and Paul had a vision of Jesus he was going to persecute Christians throw them in prison and kill them and whatever and he had a vision of Jesus and Jesus said Saul Saul why are you persecuting me is that any different than Joseph Smith of the Mormons? Joseph Smith of the Mormons had a vision of the angel Moramai, and the angel Moramai told Joseph Smith in 1830 to find some golden plates and print the Book of Mormon. So is the Apostle Paul, who wrote the Book of Acts and whatever other ones, he's no different than Joseph Smith of the Mormons. And most of you don't believe in Joseph Smith, his writings that he wrote in the Book of Mormon are true. So why should you believe the Apostle Paul, who hadn't even met Jesus, he just had a vision. Now, now Jesus historically, you know, was Jesus historically accurate, placed in history. I'll give you an example. Elvis Presley, he has a birth certificate. He has a, a proof of residence where he lived. He has so many books written about him and the Beatles and the Beatles and ABBA. We know that the Beatles existed. Uh, we know Elvis existed. Now, Jesus 
If Jesus did exist, he has no birth records, he has no records of residency, he has no court documents, he was tried in Rome by Pontius Pilate, um, he has no court records, crucifixion records, um, and also Jesus fed 5,000 with loaves and fishes. Now, if somebody did that today, I mean, Jesus fed 5,000 people with fish sandwiches. Wow, that would be headline news. And so many people would write about that in the ancient room. Well, this Jesus, he fed 5,000 people with fish sandwiches. But there's no record of it. Also, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, uh, the tombs opened and... The bodies of the holy ones rose from the dead are like zombies, you know. Now, nobody else has written anything about that except in the Gospels. There's no reports from anyone. And a lot of people say it's all in the Bible. Well, hey, the Bible, it must be sources outside of the Bible. There's no proof that any of these things happen. Jesus being raised from the dead would be front page news today but nothing was written about him. Um, so as I said, um, and also other things about the Bible, Jesus made a false prophecy, actually. He said that this generation will by no means pass away until I come back kind of thing. And he said this generation... And uh, he was talking, not to you, he wasn't talking to me, he was talking to his generation, the Israelites, and he was saying that he would come back in their lifetime. Jesus was saying he'll return, the second coming is going to be in their lifetime, the Israelites. And even in Thessalonians, the book of Thessalonians says that many of, um, you know, will see Jesus coming again and those who have, we won't go before those who have fallen asleep in death, but will see him coming on the clouds. When you read that, we will see him coming on the clouds. It's not talking to you or me. It's talking to the ancient Israelites. And it was talking about in their day. It was speaking about in their lifetime. Jesus would come in their lifetime, not yours, their lifetime. So Jesus was a false prophet, I hate to say. Um, and also there's so many strange things about the Bible. Uh, the Israelites going around the walls of Jericho, uh, blowing their trumpets and smashing jars and the walls of Jericho falling down. Things like that don't happen. Uh, Jonah surviving three days in a giant fish. That doesn't happen. Um, talking donkey, as I have another video. I have a, a video called um, Talking Donkeys, and that was in Numbers chapter 22 of the Bible, the fourth book of the Bible, Numbers. And things like that. Donkeys don't talk, you know. So extraordinary claims of the Bible need extraordinary evidence. And there's no evidence outside the book. Even the crossing of the Dead Sea, when the Israelites were running away from the Egyptians, says that God parted the waters in Egypt and going into the land of Canaan up at the Nile River, uh, the sea, the, the Dead Sea, sorry, the Red Sea, Dead Sea, there is high tide and low tide. And there is a spot in Egypt where Egypt goes into the land of Canaan and at low tide, the people can cross over to the land of Canaan. They can cross over there and they have found chariot wheels. A lot of Christians say, oh, they found uh, chariot wheels in the Dead Sea. Well, there is a part you can cross at low tide and uh, if there wasn't, chariot wheels there you'd be surprised there's a lot of other junk that they threw in there but there is ch chariot wheels because they used to cross that at low tide so these are just historical historical events and they just put god into it 
and make a fancy story of miracles and, and you know, God helped them win this war and they lost that war because um, they were picking up sticks on the Sabbath. You know, oh, the Philistines defeated us because we turned our backs on Jehovah because we were picking up sticks on the Sabbath. Who was picking up sticks on the Sabbath? So, you know, and also in the Bible, why doesn't God, in you read the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, it says that Jehovah was walking about in the breezy part of the day and Jehovah would walk with Adam and Eve and talk to them and be there and he would talk to Moses and he talked to the Israelites in the Old Testament. But why doesn't he do that now? Why doesn't he talk to us now? As time has gone on, history's rolled on, God's becoming more and more and more distant. Genesis said he made Adam and Eve, but a lot of Christians are now saying that he's used evolution to create human, evolving them. So God's becoming more and more distant. And also silly things in the Bible like circumcision. You know, in Genesis, he, he said Adam and Eve were perfect. He made them perfect. Everything he was, everything Jehovah God had made was perfect, except for the foreskin. Or maybe I shouldn't have put the foreskin on the man. Because why, why were the Israelites, why did they have to cut their foreskins off? Jehovah doesn't like foreskins. Well, he created them. Why didn't, instead of getting the Israelites to circumcise themselves, why didn't he just say, look, save you the trouble. All babies now are going to be born without foreskins. I can create no foreskins. So, you know, God doesn't like foreskins. Also, this God can move the planets and move the stars and make the sun stand still but this god cannot manage money any church you go to they're always asking for money or passing around a plate why can't god manage money god has a real problem with money they're always needing it always short of a quid god always short of a dollar god you know why does he always want money god <laughs> doesn't matter what church you go to, they always want money. And um, what was the other one I was going to say? So they're the things I just want to say why I don't believe in the Bible. And, um, you know, there's many other things. I have many videos of where I discuss certain aspects of the Bible and how that couldn't be true. There's no evidence. We have El evidence that Elvis Presley existed. And he was just a singer. Now, Jesus rose from the dead. He, he fed 5,000 fish sandwiches to the Israelites. Uh, he walked on water. Don't you think someone else would have written something about him? But there's nothing, no records, no writings, no tablets, no nothing except for Josephus, and I often wonder if the Jewish historian Josephus wrote the Book of Acts. Um, I often wonder about that because uh, Apostle Paul was shipwrecked and also Josephus, the Jewish historian, was also shipwrecked. Now, you've got to remember that Josephus was, Josephus was captured by the Romans and... Um, if you uh, go to the documentary Caesar's Messiah, there's a lot, lot of evidence and proof that the Romans invented the Jesus myth to pacify the Jews because the Jews had the Romans worried because of the messianic prophecies and uh, the Jews were very aggressive and violent. You've just got to read the Old Testament and find how violent they were. And uh, the Romans invented Jesus with the help of Josephus after they captured the Old Testament to pacify the Jews. A really good documentary to watch is Caesar's Messiah. It's really good, Caesar's Messiah. It goes for about one hour, 23 minutes, but it's well worth watching, believe me.
If you are a Christian or an ex-Christian or a Jehovah's Witness or an ex-Jehovah's Witness, and if you still think the Bible's true, go to it. If you've got a bit of fear of going to hellfire or if you're scared Jehovah's going to destroy you at Armageddon, watch Caesar's Messiah and you'll think differently. <clears throat> So, as I said, it's like reading someone else's mail that's not addressed to you. As I said, if you go down the street and pick somebody's mail out of their letterbox, it's not addressed to you. Uh, the Bible was addressed to the Israelites. They were God's chosen people. And if you're not an Israelite, uh, if you're a European or African or an Asian, um, yeah, we all have our legends, we all have our religions. We all have our myths and uh, folklores, <coughs> and the Bible is just Jewish folklore. And also, another reason why I don't believe in the Bible, because I um, never read the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, forget his name, but some mythical cre creature, man, he swam in a river to get the fountain of youth. He's a plant. He had to dive into this river, I think his name was Prometheus. His name was Prometheus, and he dived into a river to find this plant that would give him eternal life. So he had to dive underwater to get this plant that would give him eternal life. He got the plant, grabbed it, dived in the water, got the plant, dove up to the surface, and there was a snake on the surface uh, of the land, and the snake grabbed the plant. The snake took the plant of eternity, eternal life of Prometheus, so he couldn't live forever. So snake, plant, Garden of Eden. Uh, the snake took the plant of the Garden of Eden, you know. And just the whole Adam and Eve story just seems really mean because... Uh, I'm going to make this beautiful paradise for Adam and Eve. I'll put it in there, but hey, I'll put this tree in the garden. What do you think, Satan? How about we put a tree in the garden, see if they are going to worship me and obey me? Satan's going to say, that's a good idea. I'll try. Is Jehovah going to say, go on, Satan. See, you can tempt Adam and Eve with the tree of knowledge of good and bad. Go on, Satan. Turn into a snake and I'll let you do that just to see if they're going to be obedient to me. And if you don't think he would do something like that, just read the book of Job. Because Satan says to Job, God, well, this Job, he only loves you because of the things you give him. Go down and give him a bit of trouble, Satan says. If I give him a bit of trouble, he's going to curse you. And God says, yeah, go ahead, go on. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he's going to, you know. So is that a very loving thing to do? putting the tree there, setting Adam and Eve up for trouble. And when you look at the nation of Israel, they're always getting in trouble. They're losing a lot of wars to the Philistines, the Amalekites, the Midianites, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, always going to, into captivity, captivity to someone like the Babylonians, always getting in trouble. And, um, you know, because... Who was picking up sticks? Somebody must have been picking up sticks on the Sabbath because we wouldn't have gone into captivity if they weren't picking up sticks on the Sabbath or worshipping a golden calf or worshipping some statue or something, you know, always getting in trouble. And if you're a parent, if you're a parent and if you have a, a son or a daughter, you tell them to clean their room. Uh, put the garbage out, mow the lawn, and they don't do that. Are you going to get a group of thugs, a gang of bikies or something, to bash up your kids? Look, I tell my kids, they never make their bed, they won't mow the lawn, won't do the laundry, they won't do the dishes. I keep on telling them, now you gang of bikies, can you bash up my children? Can you just bash them and hurt them and teach them a lesson to obey their dad and give them trouble. You wouldn't do that. You forgive your children. Like we all did that as kids. Mow the lawn or clean your room or 
you wouldn't get a, a, a gang of bikies to harass your children so they didn't make their bed or something. And in the Bible, that's what Jehovah does, you know. As they worship some other god, they go off into captivity and they lose a battle and die and all these things, you know. So that's all I want to say. It's the 5th of the 5th, 2021. 5th of the 5th, 2021. It's winter here in Australia. Well, winter's coming up. So it's cold and, uh, hmm. So uh, thank you for staying this long on my video. If I rambled a little bit, I think I covered everything in my notes, being a good Jehovah's Witness. I always look at my outline when I do a video. And I think I've covered everything that um, had to be covered. Yeah, I have. So I'll say good night then and uh, time to go to bed. And bye then. And like and subscribe. And uh, I don't mean to bag out people's religion, by the way. I think religion can give people a lot of comfort when they lose someone in death. I've said this before. We do need, we do need comfort when we lose a loved one in death. Uh, what I believe about death, I don't know. I don't know. Is there reincarnation? Maybe. Is there life after death? Maybe. Do we go into another dimension when we die? Maybe. Will we see our dead loved ones again in a happy hunting ground? Maybe. It would be nice. It would be lovely. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But maybe not. But it's comforting to believe in something nice. And I think we'll always have religion. And it's only when it harms people it's bad so if you have a religious belief and it gives you comfort good on you it's nice to know and i don't mean to attack your religious belief we all need something to believe in and i hope there is something nice after death i hope we get to see our loved ones again that would be so happy and so beautiful and Maybe there is something. And the more I think about why do we long for something like that? Why do we long for this? You know, so there must be something in it, but I don't know. All I can do is speculate. I don't know the answers to life's mysteries. And neither do you. No, neither does anybody. No religious book, no guru, no nobody. Nobody knows the answers that's the way it is it's okay because we don't know and uh we may never know who knows i don't bye then